the world is hyper competitive. If you're going to be a man who's going to sit and say, I'm just sad, you are always going to lose in competition to men like me. Yeah. And there has to be losers for there to be winners. I am tired of sympathy. Sympathy doesn't work for anybody. I'm not going to sit here and be sympathetic for people who say they're too sad to try hard and be their best. Guess what? Perhaps I was sad every time I did exactly what I was supposed to do and trained anyway. Perhaps I was afraid when I fought anyway. Perhaps I was tired when I worked anyway. This is how you get ahead in life. I don't have a fucking ounce of sympathy for these people who sit here and say, well, I feel this way, so I can't. Then don't do it. Stay down there. The winners are at the top, and the winners at the top don't give a shit about how they feel. We wake up and we perform regardless of how we feel day after day. So if I'm going to ignore my own feelings, I'm certainly not going to take into consideration anybody else's. Yeah. Why am I going to ignore how I feel and make sure I'm constantly performing regardless, flawlessly, and then sit and go, oh, but he doesn't feel good, so he's allowed to fuck up. No, you are not. You're not allowed to fuck up to your ancestors or to God or to yourself. You have to perform. This is how it, this is what being a man is about. The baseline of masculinity is doing things you don't feel like doing. I can't comment on being a woman because I'm not one, but the baseline of masculinity as a whole is the thing that makes a good man a man is that he does what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to work and he works anyway. He doesn't want to go to war and he fights anyway. He doesn't want to get up, he gets up anyway. That's the whole point of it. We didn't want to die in the Titanic. Guess what happened? We died in the Titanic. You can't sit there as a man and say you don't feel like it. You're not allowed to not feel like it. You're supposed to do it anyway, regardless. Yeah. So when a man sits there and says, oh, but you don't understand, I'm struggling with motivation. If you are struggling with the motivation to be a winner, then stay a f loser. No problem. Stay yeah. a loser. Don't care. Because in my circle, there's no losers around me. Your energy is disgusting. I find it revolting. I don't like weakness around me, even near me. Even people coming up saying hello to me. If you're depressed, don't even shake my hand. I do not have time for losers on any regard. Winners only. Men who have mental health issues, I hope them, I wish them the best in the world. Okay, but when they come to me and say, and I get this all the time, Andrew, I have this problem. I'm depressed and I can't go to the gym. I say, no, I disagree. You're depressed because you don't go to the gym. If you go to the gym, you might start to feel better, right? I'm saying you can't sit as a man and afford the luxury of saying, I have a mental health issue today, I'm sad today, I'm stressed today, I'm emotional today, I can't work. Because you will lose against the men who don't do. As a man, it's player versus player. It's ultimately competitive. And as a man, you have to outcompete the other men who are prepared to get up and do it anyway. That's how it works. There's no such thing as saying, I'm sad, I need two weeks off. Not as a man if you want to be important. If you want to be important as a man, you have shit to do. You have duties. This is how it exists, this is how it's always been. If I feel sad, it does not change how I act and it does not change the things I do. If I don't feel like going to the gym, I go to the gym. If I don't feel like working, I will still work. I lived, a, I lived in a world for 15 years where I didn't feel like fighting because my nose was broken, but I had to fight anyway. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these people come to me and, and they say, oh, but I feel this way. I don't put a, a huge amount of importance on emotions. It's not that I don't feel them. It's that I don't think they have much to do with anything at all. If I wake up in a happy mood and I have a business to run and females to cater for and things to do, if I wake up in a sad mood, I have the same shit to do. I'm going to get it done. So where's the importance of it? It's in my mind, that's how I view it. Like, how does that affect what I'm going to do? Well, nothing. It doesn't. It's not going to affect how I live my life. So why sit around and think about it? This modern obsession with happiness is, is the number one problem with the world. Because I don't, I really don't believe humans were ever evolved to be happy, mm -hmm. were we? If you're gonna try hard at something, and I mean genuinely try, 99% of people will get adept at X thing. It doesn't matter what it is. If, if, if I decided I wanted to be good at piano and I gave it everything I got, I'd, play, I'd be able to play piano. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like there's, there's people with one hand who can play piano. It's just how much effort you're gonna put in. I don't struggle at anything because if I decide I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it. And I've never struggled with motivation. So if you don't struggle with motivation, then you're never gonna struggle with anything in life. I mean, I'm naturally adept at some things and there's some things I'm not as naturally adept at. But if you're prepared to work, you're prepared to work. So no, I don't struggle with anything. Life is not a struggle to me. I do not view life as difficult in any way. I think life is extremely easy. I believe that all of my problems are gonna be fixed by me. That no one else is gonna wake up and give a fuck about my problems the way I'm gonna give a fuck. Nobody else is gonna be prepared to go through what it takes to fix them but me. If I'm in the ring getting an ass kicking, not my coach, not my corner, not my fans, no one's gonna get me out of there alive but me. As a man, we live in hyper-competitive environments. I don't think enough men understand how competitive the world is. 
if you want a girl, you're competing against other men. You're not the only man who had the idea of getting that girl. There's no girl you're going to see and go, oh, I'll get that girl and didn't cross anyone else's mind. Everybody else wants her. You have to outcompete other men. You have to be as competitive as possible. You have to be as successful as possible in all realms. You have to be as good looking, as funny, as smart, as spontaneous, as interesting, as charismatic, as rich as possible. You need to try very hard to be your absolute best. And as you become a better man, you'll crack through different tiers of attractiveness and eventually you get to the top and you'll be able to have any girl you want. But the truth is, I have a lot of guys ask me, similar to your question, a guy will come to me and go, how do I get a girl? My like, bro, you're a loser. Yeah, but I know, but how do I get a girl? Well, you're a fucking loser. You're a loser. Why are you asking me? It's like saying, how do I win a race with a push bike? You're racing Ferraris. What do you want me to do? Yeah. There's only so much you can do. There's only so hard you can pedal. There's only so many tricks and, and tips. There's only so many game things you can say, yeah. so many pickup lines. If you're a loser, it's gonna be very, very difficult and it's gonna get harder and harder. The game is rigged to become harder and harder for men. It's not getting easier, it's going the other way. And if you're gonna be on a racetrack and there's gonna be Ferraris there, and you're gonna be on a pedal bike or in a Nissan, you're gonna get smoked. That's the game. You have no. to up yourself, you have to improve yourself. I'm not gonna to lie to anybody here and say you don't have to improve yourself. You can stay a loser and, and get chicks, because you can't, Yeah, you can't. This idea of random, just random headaches is bullshit. It's bullshit. If you have a headache, it's for a reason. Did you hit your head? Yes or no? Well, no, you didn't hit your head. So are you dehydrated? Probably. Have you drunk a bunch of water? Yeah. If you really drink a bunch of water and you didn't hit your head and your head still hurts, have you laid down, had a little nap? Maybe you were tired and now you feel okay again. Why are you taking drugs? I know people who just randomly four times a week, I have a headache, let me just take this pill. What headache? Was your brain falling out? Are you, is your brain rotting? Why do you have a headache for no reason? It doesn't make sense to me. It's stupid. A lot of it's psychological. A lot of it's placebo effect bullshit. And it's an entirely wrong worldview. You can't just go through life medicating yourself for imaginary fucking illness. It's dumb. If you want to get rich, you have to act quickly. You have to do things fast. Speed is rule one. Not enough people understand the importance of speed because every hour you spend not making money is an hour you're not going to get back. The sooner you turn on the tap to the money, the more money you're going to make. You have to be very, very quick. Life only teaches you lessons the hard way. There's no other way to truly learn a lesson. The thing is you'll notice about people is that when life is trying to give them a lesson the easy way, they'll ignore it. Oops. Oh, like you'll see it all the time. People will, some, they'll have close call, close call, close call, close call. They won't pay attention until something really bad happens. And then they'll be like, oh no, I'll do anything to take this back. Yeah. That's how people learn. No one learns the easy way. It takes a very smart person to learn the easy way. Everybody only learns the hard way ever. The number one thing people don't have control of in their lives is their mind. But what's funny about that is, the only thing in life you can truly control is your mind. You can't control other people. You can't control the weather. You can't even control your health. Your heart might stop beating. You don't make it beat. It just goes, so it's gonna turn off one day. Yep. The only thing you can control in, the, in your life is what you think in your mind. So if you're gonna sit there and go, oh, I'm sad, well, you, you can change that if you actually try, but you don't, you just accept it, right? So people have lost control of, of their own minds. And I don't understand why you would allow your mind your own mind to take power from you. Why would you believe in your, let your own mind convince you you're not a lucky person or I'm not this or I'm not confident. Why would you let your own mind sabotage you? Life as a man is exceptionally difficult. I say the most beautiful and the most terrifying thing about being a man is you're born without value. Society doesn't care about you. You're only gonna be cared about based on how useful you are. You have the chance to build yourself up and become a superhero if you're prepared to do the hard work and be indefatigable enough to never quit. But if you're gonna stand around and wait for a handout, nobody's gonna ever respect you. I think that a lot of people have forgotten about how difficult and how competitive it is as a man. We're always in constant competition with each other. And it's your duty as a man to stand up and say, I wanna be as important and strong and good-hearted and God-fearing as possible. And I need to work hard to achieve those things. And the dangerous thing about overly emotional men is that they're dangerous. They're genuinely dangerous. This is what's crazy. All these people who talk about toxic masculinity and how bad it is for men to be traditionally masculine. A traditionally masculine man does things he doesn't feel like doing because it is his duty to do them. He charges into the burning building because it is his duty. Not because he feels like it, because it is his duty. We're now teaching the new generation of men that they don't have duty and they can just act on their feelings and act how they feel and they don't have to act as a man should. Do you know what happens when you get men who just act how they feel? You get school shooters, you get violence. Men who do not control their emotions are dangerous. If you find a man who is stoic, he's not gonna hurt people. He's gonna sit and think about his actions very carefully and he's gonna be a good man who protects for it and provides for his family. You find a man who just acts out on impulse and does whatever he feels like, you're gonna find a dangerous man. Sitting here telling men to cry more and act with their feelings and it's okay to feel this way, that way, etc., and have no self-control. That is why we have the problems we have in the world. 
absolutely nutly wrong. So when they talk about toxic masculinity, they have it completely inverse on its head, completely nutly wrong. We need to be teaching stoicism. We need to be teaching young men to understand that the world is very, very difficult. It's hard to be a man. You're going to feel bad sometimes. You just suck it up and perform anyway. Not to sit there and cry your eyes out or blame other people. And when bad things happen, they call traditionally masculine men. If you need a firefighter, you need a masculine man. When you call the police because of the problem you had, you want masculine men. And as soon as a woman or a man is in trouble, when you look for backup, you look for masculine men. And masculine men have a duty to provide and protect those they care about. We have a duty to do things we don't feel like doing because we know we're supposed to do them. And that's why we stayed in the Titanic and died. The real problem with the world is that there's an epidemic of cowardice. Man. Men are cowards. We have an epidemic of cowardice. Everybody is so afraid. It's on the other side of fear that you're going to garner the respect of other individuals. You have to do things that they're afraid to do, meaning most likely you are also afraid. I've done a bunch of shit. I was afraid 87 times before I got in the ring and cage. It's scary, right? I lived a scary life. But by going through all of that, I am now respected. You have to learn to face your fear. I'm not saying be, I'm not saying not be afraid because that's not brave. If you do something and you're not afraid, you're not brave. You have to be afraid and do it anyway. That's what courage is. So I'm not saying you can be as scared as you want, but you still have to go. We're living inside of a video game. Because in a video game, you're gonna go through trial and tribulation. You're gonna struggle to upgrade your character. And the reason you upgrade your character is when you get more stats, you can complete more difficult levels within the game. Life is exactly the same. The levels never end, but as you become better, you stand a better chance of completing them. So as you upgrade your character, you get further and further in the game, but the game never ends. That's the beauty of being a man. All these men are out here complaining, complaining that things are difficult. The reason it has value is because it's difficult. If it was easy, everyone would have it and it wouldn't have any value. Plain that it's hard to get a Lambo. The reason having a Lambo is cool is because nobody has a Lambo. How are you gonna complain that it's hard to be the man, but then also understand that being the man has value? They are linked. You cannot separate the two. It's a logic fail. If you love the fact, if you love the idea of being that character you dream of yourself to be, then you should love the fact it's hard to become that man because it means no one else can do it. There's no light without dark. You will not appreciate your six pack unless you didn't have one and you had to earn it. That's how the world works. So when I talk to these dudes like, oh, but it's, you know what, Tate? Yeah, I agree, but you know, it's hard, it's hard. Of course it is, it's supposed to be. And if you're not cut out for it, then fuck off and live a normal existence and die. Sit there letting other men enjoy the spoils of being a man and die. If that's what you want to do, is just sit there and exist and then be fade into history unremembered, that's your decision. If you want to level up your character, then you need to get out here and do it. You need to be around brave men. You need to get some balls. You need to get your network together. You need to do the truth. Humble yourself. Stop sitting there with an ego. Realize you ain't shit. You're nothing but lucky. Bacteria could have stole your eyesight at the age of three, and it didn't. You could have been in a car crash and lost both your parents. Never happened. You've been nothing but lucky. Blind luck has given you a favorable hand and you've managed to f*** it up. And they are trying to convince you that you should act how you feel. You should show more of your feelings. If you feel this way, you should show it. If you want to cry, cry. Look, I have no problem with guys crying. Sometimes guys cry, right? My dad died, I cried. I've, I've cried once in 10 years, but it's not a default emotion for me. Sometimes you cry, right? What I'm saying is the reason they're trying to bring out emotionality in you is because most of the time you don't feel like doing the things you're supposed to do. But the true masculine frame throughout history was doing the things they didn't want to do, but they knew they had to do because they had honor and duty. That's what honor and duty means. Do you think the men on the Titanic wanted to stay on the Titanic? No, we're men. We have to stay. We're scared, but we must. It's our duty to let the women and children on the lifeboats. Yeah. This is masculine duty. When you remove self-control from men, you get, not only do you get emasculated weak men, but what you also get is very dangerous men because the world at large is trying to tell you, just be more in touch with your feelings and everything's gonna be fine. Men also have an innate desire, one for conquest, and two, we have a biological response. We are very predispositioned to anger. You look at all these school shooters and these are men who can't control their emotions. That's yeah. all they are. Facts. They have no self-control. And then they go and do dangerous shit. A good man controls himself. I have absolute self-control. If I decide to smash your face in, it was a very conscious decision. Nothing to do with the fact <laughs> I was angry. You understand? Emotional control is absolutely and utterly important as a man. 
Now, I'm not saying become a stoic dork, have no personality, be a boring I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you need to understand as a man, there are certain principles under which you act regardless of how you feel. Bam. I can wake up in a terrible mood. I can wake up sad, I can ache, I can have a, a busy day, stressed, etc. I will complete the same tasks as if I woke up in a fantastic mood. I'll do the same things because how I feel has no bearing on the things I'm going to do with my day because I have duty to myself and to my bloodline. So a lot of you guys out here are acting like fools because you feel like acting like fools. And what I'm going to say to you is, because you think there's something wrong with you, you go, well, I don't, I lack motivation. You hear this one? I don't have the motivation to go to the gym. Well, here's the news flash. Neither did I. And I still did it. So now what are you going to say? Now you have no excuse, right? Oh, you're scared to get in the ring. So was I. I still did it. Scared to get in the cage. So was I. I still did it. Being a man isn't about not feeling things. It's about acting the way you're supposed to act regardless of how you feel. And I'm tired of hearing guys messaging about how they feel. I don't feel motivated. I don't feel. Feel, 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 feel. Leave the feelings to the girls, right? That's what they do. We act. We're men of action. We get things done. That's how the world got built. All of it. All the men who built the skyscrapers felt scared they did it anyway you need to become a man of action stop worrying about how you feel and start worrying about what you're supposed to be doing how do you think chess reflects life if you lose somewhere you made a mistake there's no luck absolutely right and chess even if it's the smallest